What's up? How are you? <laughs> hey, you're my guinea pig. This is the first time we've tried doing a Thursday afternoon chat via Zoom. So that means you and I actually had to dress up um, and, and you went with a, a fine collection of... Uh, what, what are you wearing today? Is that Versace... Uh, it's paint, paint spackled. I even hate to say it's Abercrombie and Fitch. They've been having these 70% off sales, so I buy a bunch of stuff. I normally just buy a bunch of stuff and then I return most everything um, when they have when anybody has a sale. So I spend like an unbelievable seven hundred dollars and then I return all but a hundred dollars of it um, just so that I can try it out. Gotcha. Anyway, I didn't shower this morning. I got up, I was in my underwear, and I got a call. Hey, you have, are you supposed to be here in 15 minutes? I'm just checking it. I'm like, oh my gosh, I forgot. So the fact that um, this is happening now is wonderful. I'm dressed. I, I got put a hat on because I hadn't done my hair and I just got it cut. I cut it a little too short, but that's all right. Yeah. If it makes you feel any better, I did not brush my teeth this morning. I, I ran out the door. And I didn't either. <laughs> So. Glad it's good. This is radio, and this is you and I here. Um, I want to lead off, Chad, just playing a new song for everybody. You guys did a unspoken did a new song in quarantine the other day that I want to play for everybody. Now this is not actually happening live because it's just you and I talking, but you guys did do it live the other day that I want to play for everybody. Um, all from different rooms or different homes. Um, can you just walk me up the song you've always been for our audience? Totally. Um, I. I'm just the clock on the wall is ringing 12. <laughs> so just hold on a second. It should be. I thought the band was there to play. I'm like, oh, I thought um, we were going to do this. We actually, um, we recorded this the, the other day in quarantine from all of our sort of different houses and stuff like that. So um, I've been having to do a lot of these kinds of things, but um, it's kind of fun. Anyway, you know, it's, it's good. So the song... Um, just, uh, you know, really so many of the songs that we write and you guys play are just reminders of things we already know. But when we get into our lives, right, we, we forget what the real truth is, what God says, and we're consumed with our situation and our feelings and all of that. So again, this song is just a reminder that, you know, sometimes and often we have to look to our past um, to see where God has worked and what God has done in his faithfulness to give us hope in the present for the future. You know what I'm saying? And so that's what this song is, a personal testimony, you know, family. My wife really was struggling with anxiety due to trauma in her past. And, and this was like a five-year, seven-year, five-year kind of journey. Um, and she's doing better. But in the middle of all of this, um, I was really feeling hopeless as this song was kind of birthed. Um, just saying, man, when is God going to show up? You know, when are we going to find this relief and, and um, this healing or whatever? We're doing everything we should be doing, you know? Um, and, uh, and then I just, I, I was reminded that, you know, if I look to my past and I look to all the stuff God had done in, the, in, the, in my life, you know, he's never abandoned me or forsaken me. And maybe he hasn't answered every prayer in my timeline or the way I want it to be. But he continues to show me that he opens the pathway to Jesus and, and show me that Jesus is everything I'll ever need. So, you know, he fills those needs as, as they come. Uh, and so that's what this song is. It's just, uh, just a wonderful reminder that he's always been and always will be uh, there for us. Perfect. Here is the uh, latest from Unspoken. You've always been on the Joy FM. All right, that's a quarantine edition of a new song from Unspoken called You've Always Been. Chad, where can, uh, I'm assuming, just normal places people consume music, Spotify, you know, everything? I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> yes, I would say yeah. We made it, and that's the where my job ends right there. Yeah. All right. Um, how, uh, let's, I want to, before we get into talking quarantine, as far as your home, uh, first of all, is Darren from We Are Messenger still your next door neighbor or did they bolt? Yes, he is my next door neighbor. And in fact, I am literally with him right now. I am writing with Darren, with John from my band and Kyle from his band. We're all upstairs 
uh, right now. So I'm, I came down here and I'm at Kyle's house and sitting in his little office, uh, which is the clock and all of that. So we're yeah. still neighbors and we're even together in this moment that we're recording this. Okay, great. Um, this is the one uh, kind of, I, I don't know, the, you, chatting with you is one of the first interviews where I don't really have to prep. I know uh, some of the things that you've dealt with in your life, some of the things I've dealt with in my life, and we've just come through a pandemic. I just wanted to get your thoughts as somebody who was over 14 years sober. Uh, you and I have chatted about addiction for years and years. Um, this pandemic has been, uh, for people who are addicts, all of a sudden meetings get canceled. People who rely upon meetings for sobriety. Um, how much time during lockdown pandemic has you know somebody who struggled with addiction have your thoughts been on on people who do rely upon meetings and stuff to stay clean because they can't you know totally no i i i 100 percent i i i'm seeing that I'm, I'm seeing a need for um what meetings are are accountability they're they're a place to come to be transparent and to be encouraged um, and so, you know, to me, what I'm hoping is like, and a lot, a lot of times in the recovery world, you have sponsors and stuff like that, people that check up on you and all of that. So hopefully that's all still going on. And really what it is, is we need relationship and accountability and, and real friendships and stuff like that. So, um, I mean, I've obviously been um, thinking a lot about um, all of the people that are, that are struggling in these moments here. And of course, you know, none of us are, I'm not, um, you know, I'm just one, I'm just a few bad decisions away from being right back where I was, but by the grace of God, you know, um, taking today, living in victory and what he's called me to, but, you know, we've been, uh, we're, we're trying to figure out ways to, to, um, uh, to have interactive concerts that we can not only just play for people, but they, they can ask us questions and talk. And so the recovery people have been right up there in the, you know, um, cause they're my people, but right up there in the top of that, that uh, priority list for us. And so, yeah, I mean, there's just, there's so much, the wake of this is, is just going to be so when we finally come all out of it and, and we'll see the destruction that kind of this whole thing is, has brought, but the good thing is, is that we serve a redeeming God who has redeeming qualities. And so, um, you know, there's, there's nothing that, that he can't bring back and restore. I mean, that's what he's in the business of doing. So, um, but, but it does go to show me that you can't put your hope and I can't put my hope in, you know, um, a 12 step program. It's a tool, you know, and, 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 and like in our home, like therapy, can't be the end all be all, you know, it's a tool to help us get through what we're doing. Um, you know, but it is the relationships that we have and, 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 and obviously our relationship with God that keeps us the most grounded and, and, and accountable. But um, yeah, my heart definitely goes out for, for people who are just struggling right now. And these kinds of things are where addiction and abuse even just magnifies because people are just stir crazy and they're scared and they're nervous about how they're going to pay their bills and all those things, you know, can drive people to do lots of other stuff, you know? Yeah. I was thinking it's like a perfect storm for your, your, if you've got a friend that struggles with addiction, this stuff does trigger addicts and now they're meeting their one place where they would go is canceled. So it's this horrible storm. So I think, like you said, uh, it would be a good idea for anybody listening. If you do have a friend that is an addict, when all this stuff goes away, check on them. I, I think would be a good thing. Check on them. Make sure, you know, they yeah. weren't in the pack. Even when it goes away, just now checking on them, you know, just calling them up. And I've just kind of put into practice in my own life as like God brings people up to my mind. You know, I'll text them or call them, you know, whoever it is. And a lot of times those, those texts and calls have been pretty timely, um, both uh, been on the receiving end as well as um, on the, the giving end of that. And so I think that's a, a beautiful thing. But again, remember, you know, we're not our, the fact that we're all of these things, God understands how weak we are. This isn't like permission to go do. I honestly think that 
that some of the worst consequences and, and punishment of sin is the, the storm that it creates in our own head and heart. You know, it's the guilt and the shame. Like those things aren't, aren't to, you know, for the family of God, you know, we have conviction, but you know, and when we, so I guess what I'm saying is that, you know, um, that the Lord still loves us through all these mistakes that we make and through the, the trip ups that we have and everything. And again, one of my favorite verses is, is out of the Psalms where David says a righteous person falls seven times, but gets up again. And what does that mean? You know, that means that a righteous person like you and I were righteous because of God's righteousness, right? Jesus is the high priest. Now his righteousness is our righteousness. So you're saying that like even good people, even good Christian, wholesome people, they continually fall, you know, seven times that number of perfection. So it's like, we're going to fall. But what separates us from the people that aren't in the family of God is that, that we can get up again, knowing that uh, it doesn't all rest on our performance. It rests on what Jesus has done. So if you're one of those people out there that has been falling and tripping into these things, get back up again and keep walking uh, that walk and keep taking the step. Um, because even David said, Good people fall and they constantly fall, but they get back up again. That's what makes this all special and different than every other religion. It's because God has made the way for us. And all we have to do is walk in that. That's great. Talk to us about the uh, Matson home during quarantine. Um, has it been madness or beautiful or um, a collection? No, it's, it's honestly been, it's been like pretty good. Um, like the first two weeks, I was like, oh, this is cool. Because we were on this tour and, um, and four days into it, it gets canceled. But the, uh, the second weekend of the tour was my son's 13th birthday. So I was already kind of in turmoil about missing that. And I was trying to figure out a way to get him out to me and all of that. And so this all hit. So when it canceled, I was like, yes, you know, I can be home. <laughs> um, yeah. And so uh, first two weeks were good. And then this third week, um, I started to be like, okay, wow. Like, what am I, like, I cleaned out my attic. I cleaned my garage. I cleaned all my cars. I, I'm like, what else is there to do, you know? And of course, you know, all these projects cost money. And if you're not making money, you don't want to spend money. So it's like, it's not like this is an awesome time for projects, you know? Yeah. All that to say is that uh, my wife said like, every once in a, in a week or once every two weeks, I get this look in my eye where I'm looking for someone to tease and to make angry or to bring to the point of tears. And she's like, I can see the look in your face right now. And so I'm realizing I need to grow up some because I get bored and I just want to tease people because I'm bored and, and then yeah. someone ends up crying. So um, <laughs> I feel that. I got to grow up there. But it's been pretty peaceful. I mean, we've been taking bike rides and I've been, I was on Dan Bremnis's um, Instagram a whole bunch and he's got all these amazing recipes of food that he makes. So I'm like baking banana bread and real bread and biscuits and doing all sorts of pokey bowls. And so I'm trying to stay busy with some of that stuff. Um, and uh, so it's, it's been okay. And again, you know, after all these years, um, just to know that the Lord is with us. He's going to take care of us. Like I, I, I just have that kind of faith that, you know, because of all that we've been through, I mean, all those years of poverty, playing music and doing all these things, I just know, all right, God's going to take care of us, you know, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. Usually it's in the 11th hour, which kind of stinks, but, um, but he's been there and I, I ain't got no complaints, man. I honestly, I'm just enjoying the time that I have with also going a little bit insane. Right. When 9-11 happened, all the songwriters got something spurred inside of them. Um, it's just an instinct. And now I think this pandemic is doing the same thing as a songwriter. Is this a, is this a, like a, just walking into a toy store, like a kid from a songwriting perspective, or is it torturous? Cause there's so much time and so much blank paper. Mm, I, I wouldn't say that like, I wouldn't say that this has been like an overly creative time for, for me. Um, but again, I get into that creative space and it's like, I, I can't see anything else. So it's actually probably been a blessing. So as, as, as I've 
kind of been in the, and a lot of times I'll just be in my house playing guitar or whatever, and I'll be around my family and that spurs on creativity for me. Um, but, uh, but I would say, yes, a lot of times that is true what you're saying, but, uh, but for me, I haven't really worried about, about that. I kind of have like when a season comes up to start writing, then I'm in it. And otherwise I'm just kind of compiling ideas and thinking about things and, but I'm not quite working on anything yet. So I've done a little bit of that, a little bit of writing and stuff, but, um, but it hasn't been, I'm sure some awesome songs will come out of this, but they haven't come yet. Right. I'm going to let you choose your last question. Which of these two would you like to answer? What's the big spontaneous makes no sense purchase for your family during this pandemic? Or what is the skill you think you acquired through this pandemic? Um, well, okay, I'll answer both of them. Um, okay. One was I've always like, I don't really have much of a backyard. And so I've always been trying to justify in my head how a golf cart would be amazing because I can go, my neighborhood is in a way that I can go all these places um, to the different stores and stuff. It's just really centrally located to our little town. Um, but I never can afford a golf cart because even the crappiest ones are two grand and the really nice ones are six grand and or eight grand or whatever. So I was in Costco the other day and, um, and I saw like one of those bird scooters, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. <laughs> and, and so Costco now, before I went in there, I was like, what's your return policy? You know, <laughs> so I wanted to know, could I buy this and then return it? And they were like, basically, our return policy is amazing. If there's for any reason you don't like it, you don't want it, you don't think it's worth the money you paid, blah, blah, blah. You can bring it back within a year. And so I was like, perfect. So I bought this $500 <laughs> scooter, like this bird scooter thing. And it's been tons of fun. I don't know if I'll keep it or not, but um, right now we're, we're rocking it and having fun. Um, it's very similar to your clothing shopping. Everything has to do with the return policy. Exactly. Yeah, okay. I can tell you some cool stories, but I, I can say that I am, I am a, re, a recovered abuser because when I was a kid, I buy those Air Maxes like any basketball shoe, and then you know two months into basketball season or a month in, I'd be like, oh, I want that new shoe, so I'd find a way to break the old ones that looked legit so that I could return it, and basically I was stealing. So I'm not doing that <laughs> anymore. Um, which That's is good. Um, and then I would say that. Um, there isn't really a skill that I feel like I've, um, I mean, I've had to wear a lot of hats over the years. I would say that like, I haven't been a great baker um, because I've never baked, but in this season I've baked and it's been fun with the kids and, and, uh, and doing that stuff. And again, where we are now is, is really opened up quite a bit more. Um, and uh, even from the county that we're in to uh, Davidson County, which is Nashville, there's like quite a big difference. We have a lot more freedoms than, than they do. And so, um, you know, so it's, it's not as crazy as it was, but in the thick of it, like my kids are like, oh, I miss my friends. This stinks. And I'm like, yeah, all of my kids' birthdays were kind of in this little season. And, you know, so we're going to make it up to them. All right. Awesome. The new, uh, new song from unspoken is now available. You've always been, Check that out. One of my favorite Joy FM artists. And uh, Chad, lo love you dearly. And thank you for taking a moment. You're welcome. Much love to you. I've had good days. I've had bad days. Tasted victory and defeat. I've had problems, biggest planets turn to pebbles when you speak. I've had nothing to my name, never lacked for anything, no, cause you were there with me. You've been my savior, sustainer, when I'm at my end, my healer, redeemer, again and again. My mother and my father, brother, sister, and friend And everything I've needed, Lord, you've 
you've always been and everything I've needed Lord you've always been when I stand before you guilty oh your mercy bears my blame when in pride I think I'm worthy you point out the price you paid when I wander far away you keep calling out my name you don't give up on me Savior, sustainer, when I'm at my end My healer, redeemer, again and again My mother and my father, brother, sister, and friend And everything I've needed, Lord, you've always been And everything I've needed, Lord, you've always been When I'm at my end My healer, redeemer Again and again My mother and my father Brother, sister, friend And everything I've needed, Lord You've always been Everything I've needed, Lord You've always been Oh yes, you have Jesus Time and time again